Dave from Dave's Wheeler Shopworks here, and uh, we are continuing our cheap 440 build. This will be part 13 of the series, and we are going to install cam bearings. I'm going to show you two, then I'm going to do the other uh, five, other three off camera, and then we're going to slide the camshaft in to check and make sure that it rotates smoothly. All right, so to install cam bearings, it's pretty simple but there are a few specific details you got to deal with and you need the right tools. Not a lot of people have them, but I am lucky that I do. So this is a universal camshaft bearing installation tool kit. Comes with various sizes to grab bearings and they have a soft rubber surface so you don't mar the bearings when you're installing them. These are thick rubber ones. These are thin rubber ones you can use in case you have less room on your bearing because these will only expand to a certain size. They've got a little lip on them right here. So that lip catches the edge of the bearing as you're driving it in. And again, it's even all the way around so it doesn't mar the bearing surface. This is a long driver for it, and this is a short driver. And here's the expander. You're also going to need a hammer. And a uh, for this one, you need a 7 16 wrench to tighten and loosen the uh, cam bearing tool. Also, our cam bearings. You're also going to want a sharpie. Uh, we're going to grab our cam bearings. Now, the bearings are all numbered for position. And it comes with a little stamping part number on each one of them. So, see, bearing number five, you would look. There's my stamping PD12-5. PD12-5. And it's position number five, so I know that's going to be the right bearing. You have to start with the far end in first and then work your way out the bearings. You can't really see it just in the camera, but the bearings are number one is large, number two is slightly smaller, three is slightly smaller again, four is slightly smaller again, and five is slightly smaller again. To illustrate that, here's number one and here's number five. You see how they slide in and that's for installing the camshaft. It's for making the tool work. You can't install each bearing nice and easily and quickly if they're all the same size. You're constantly fighting with getting the tool past the last bearing. It would be a nightmare. So our first bearing is number five. This is the oil hole. There's a corresponding oil hole in the engine block and they need to be lined up perfectly. Now for number five we need our long driver because we're going right down through the middle of the whole engine. and we're going to need our centering cone. just got to select the right size expander, get the little wipe off, bearing back down, slide the expander on, line up its shoulders with the shoulder of the inner expander. All right, then we get this on because that'll keep everything flush and tight when you tighten it together. Spin the end on our long driver. Do not tighten. Now, take your bearing, gently slide it in place, tighten up the expander by hand. There, just like that. Expander's all done. And then we're going to mark on our expander where that black sharpie mark and the oil ring line up at.
All right, basically got that marked. Next up, we're ready to install it. So, next we grab our hammer. And it doesn't have to be a great big hammer. It's just gotta be a hammer that you know you can drive a seal in or whatever. So, we're going this point up. Slide it right on in down the bores. One, two, three, four, and come up to number five. And we'll stop there. So then this cone goes in like that. And you do have to hold the cone in while you're driving the bearing in place. So, having said that, you can see there's our bearing. The rubber is resting on the bore right now. Maybe you can't see that. So there's our bearing. The rubber is resting on the bore. And now we have to line up our bearing and our mark with that oil hole mark. Okay, holding everything nice and tight. Firmly, give it a few smacks. Now, I like to go in until the bearing is almost in place and from there I can take a flashlight and with that flashlight I can uh, look down the oil hole and right now I can actually see my oil hole is nearly lined up And it's crooked. I'm gonna take that apart. Hmm. All right, I have to drive it out and then drive it back in again. Brutal. I hate that. But part of making it right. do this gently for just such a reason because if we have to take the bearing off at any point in time you can damage it and we don't want to damage it we want to be gentle to what we're doing so if you look at our bearing it looks good no problems okay let's try this again Now we're going to stop a little sooner because I'd noticed that my oil hole was already pretty much centered up. Okay, I literally have to slightly tap it a little more. The goal is to not see the oil hole at all. That means you're lined up perfectly like the oil hole on the bearing itself. A couple light love taps. And I think we win. I cannot see the bearing. I don't know if I can get you in there or not. This, actually, I can. So hang on. Bear with me. I hope that'll focus. But you cannot see anything for the edge of the bearing for the oil hole. You can see my flashlight. Nothing for the bearing. So we're pretty darn happy. That's about as good as it gets. four is especially difficult because we're not just lining up one oil hole we're lining up two three oil holes number four passes oil up to the cylinder head on either side as well as receives oil from the main journal so these two go to the cylinder head this is what we want straight up and down but you notice he's slotted just to make it a little more difficult so we're going to do our best to line him up and if we gotta redo it, we gotta redo it. Here goes. Make my marks. Make my mark. In we go. 
Again, slide it in nice and gently. We don't want to nick the edges of the bearing or make something difficult to install. Get her lined up where we're pretty happy, at least so we think. Check the flashlight. I'd like to get this one first round. Because I don't like pounding them in and pounding them out. I think eventually you would change the shape if we had to do it a few times. I've been pretty successful in doing it uh, once to twice, but I like to get it in the first try. So let's see, here goes. And again, not heavy tapping, not smack this thing. You're not trying to drive it to the moon. Once you get it in so far, there's about 3 16ths of an inch left. And we check and we're just our oil hole is only slightly uncovered, so we have to go at least that 3 16 of an inch, if not more. Let's see how that looks. Well, we still have to drive it a touch more. We're still uncovered, but it looks fairly even. Like I said, light smacks. Better to smack it a bunch of short times than a couple of heavy drifts and have to do it all over again. Okay, oil hole has completely disappeared on the bearing. Can't see the bearing anymore. That means we are lined up pretty darn good. Moment of truth is gonna be checking our oil holes into the head. And they, well, this is interesting. So if I look up, my oil hole is lined up perfectly on the bearing. So now if I look down, these are both slightly off center. So that is kind of a problem. The best I can do is center them up a little bit better than what they are. So I have to turn the bearing clock, counterclockwise like a fraction, but I don't mind doing it. I'd rather do it a couple times to get it right. I could easily show you it done, but that's not the case. We're not, we're not trying to hide anything here. Screw it up, you fix it. All right. Bearing is out. Loosen it off. Take our bearing shell. I like doing this on a 440. There's lots of room down there. We're going in. Now, that was dead on. So we're just gonna move it a touch. That's, that's a problem. It's like working with a level. A level can look dead on many different ways, but it's still off. So, here we go. And again, I know where it's going, but I'm still going to check. Yeah, we still have to keep going. Almost. One more little pass. The nice thing about using a big hammer for me is that I can let the weight of the hammer do the work. Okay. We are lined up. I don't know where we're going to be when we pull it apart, but we're sure going to find out. Hey, you know what? I think we kind of locked out. Yeah, we're even on our holes now. You can see the light shining straight through with no obstruction down there. That means the oil hole is clear. I can look in and I can see there's nothing. All right. Okay, guys, that's installing cam bearings. Now, I'm going to install the other three 
And once I'm done that, I'm going to take you back and we're going to just slide the camshaft in with a little bit, a little bit of engine oil on the bearings. And uh, we want to make sure the camshaft rotates smooth. So stay tuned. All right, so uh, here's my camshaft. It's a comp cams unit. I'll go over the specs at another time. And here is my high-end, extremely fancy installation tool. Now, I've lubricated the the journals on the camshaft um, and that's all we need to do for this and you just gotta go gently. You ever wonder what you're fighting against when you're putting a camshaft in? It's the lobes sticking off the camshaft hitting everything you don't want them to hit. So you have to be super gentle. You gotta make sure you keep finding your center balance of the cam as it goes in further, it gets a little more difficult. And I've installed cams on a wide variety of engines and everyone's got their little quirks. You can rest it on the journals as you go. They're evenly spaced, most camshafts. And then the very end, I try to, uh, yeah, it's hitching up on me there. There we go. At the very end, you got to try and just balance it into the edge of the number five and number one and then you can slide it in and back out again oops in we go there Okay, so cam gear installed loosely. We just want to rotate the camshaft around. And it feels pretty good. There's nothing there that's going to cause us any issues down the road. And first time the engine winds over with oil pressure and everything, if there like there is a slight little hitch up right there, but I can still spin this freely without any effort, so that's so minor that that is a good cam line bore. Our cam line bore is good. Camshaft install successful. I'll pull the cam out again and I'll pull, put it back in its box, keep it safe, and we're good to go. Thank you very much for watching and stay tuned for episode 14 when we're actually installing the crankshaft for the first time, for the last time, this time.